Here at the Post Malone Raising Canes in Utah, we pride ourselves on hand-battered chicken fingers. Post, we do that at every Raising Canes. It's kind of like our whole thing. It most certainly is Raising Canes founder Todd Graves. But does every Raising Canes have Post Malone collector cups? For a limited time, we do. When you post up your combo at all Raising Canes. But can you put this in your cup? What you put in them is your business. Do with it what you want. I will. You should. I am. And you should too. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers. And Post Malone Cups. One, One love. <laughs> this podcast of the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs is sponsored by AAA Heating and Air. The premier HVAC company in the Midlands is growing. Are you a top HVAC technician? AAA Heating and Air is looking for dedicated applicants to fill their fast-growing service department with top-notch HVAC technicians. If you're the best, then they want you. If you're ready to stop working and start a career, you can earn up to $100,000 plus a year at AAA Heating and Air. Quality candidates will have at least two years' experience and a good driving record. Benefits include top industry salaries, commission on service and unit sales, set call limits, company-provided take-home vehicle and gas card, company-provided cell phone and tablet, health, dental, and vision benefits, 401k retirement plan with company match and scaled PTO based on length of service. Contact Roy and Dana Finley at 803-677-1500 or check out their job postings on Facebook or ZipRecruiter. Triple A air when you need us. Triple A heating and air. It's the Geek Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs. Welcome back. Founded by Firemen with Chris Clark. The 2007 South Carolina class was at that time, sixth in the country and fourth in the SEC, which is amazing. West Mitchell. You know, I think if you're South Carolina, you're you're aiming to, to at least be at 50%. Then in theory, you're adding talent, you're getting better, you're putting yourself in a position to compete. And Tyler Head. It's been a great week for South Carolina. On the recruiting front, still fairly plenty to talk about. On the home of the Gamecocks. 107.5. The Game. Two years in a row, our offense has been last in the SEC at turning the ball over. Nobody in this league has fumbled and thrown more interceptions than we have in the last two seasons. So that's got to improve. That starts with me as the head football coach. And then obviously we've got to be better at running the football and stopping the run as well. We've got a demanding schedule that we get to play, opening up with North Carolina and finishing with Clemson, two teams that played in the ACC championship game last season, not to mention the eight SEC games that we'll play between those guys as well so uh gonna be a challenging year for us but we're excited about getting started and welcome in to the gamecock central takeover hour presented by firehouse subs here on 107.5 the game tyler head i'm currently sitting at the table by myself because everybody is stuffing their face with the new pepperoni pizza sub here at firehouse subs and uh, colin gave me his analysis said it was pretty dang good so I'm going to have to check that out in the next commercial break. But as always, we appreciate Firehouse Subs for having us out today. We're at the Casey location, 542 Knox Abbott Drive, right across the street from Brooklyn Casey High School. Going to be broadcasting live until noon um, here. And uh, plenty to talk about. Uh, you just heard that cut coming off the bumper there of Shane Beamer uh, yesterday at Media Days addressing turnovers. And that's one thing that he has harped on so much in this offseason is getting better at not turning the ball over. Of course, South Carolina, one of or the worst in the SEC last year and doing that with 27 total, 14 interceptions, and 13 fumbles. And unfortunately, it's easier said than done. You can't just say we're going to stop turning the ball over. You have to change things from a fundamental standpoint to make that happen. Figured I might come do some work. Yeah, Wes is actually going to do something now. Hey, I did help open the show, Tyler. Yeah. I know. Uh, I heard you guys. I closed out the first. After, after debating <laughs> we, we who was going so to well. do it. Just no, I closed so, out the first second. Yeah, we did it uh, so well opening up that show. Kyle, I'm, 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 glad I have, I'm glad I have job security. You do. Yeah. Uh, we confirmed no, we that for you. But, yeah, yeah. so I think it's kind of interesting, y'all. I've noticed two or three main trends with Shane Beamer this offseason. And, and turnovers is definitely one of them. I, I think... If you listen to a coach enough, you can tell what's kind of been keeping them up at night. And for Beamer, it's been turnovers. And you've seen him say in several outings how, hey, we've created turnovers, but we've turned the ball over ourselves way too many times. Uh, You've heard him talk about inconsistency, the fact that you didn't score an offensive touchdown against Florida. Then a week later, you were beating what at the time was a playoff team by scoring 63 points. And so he's talked many, many times about all the ups and downs. And can you can you level that out a little bit? Can you find cons- some consistency? And um, 
You know, I, I think the third is probably the the fact that they've got to stop the run better mm-hmm. on defense. So I, I think those are kind of the three big things I've heard him mention over and over and over, which means you know it's it's important to him. And again, those are those are all things that are more what would you say symptoms sure. than something you can quite literally fix. Yeah. You have to fix other things that in turn create either the same issue or eliminate the issue. And I, I think, you know, the problem with some of those is it's, you know, how, how do you fix it? How do you go do it? And how do you walk that line between being aggressive on offense but not turning the football over? How do you walk the line between uh, not trying to do too much schematically on offense while still doing enough to keep your opponent guessing and, and, and sort of where they can't just – where you're not predictable. So I, I think for Rattler, for the offense in general – it's going to be a huge emphasis, but that also is no guarantee that it's going to play out that way. And I think, I think too, we talk about the, the simplicity of it. There was a quote from Rattler, and I don't know if we have it queued up from a cup perspective. He, this was in the electronic media room, and someone said, uh, Shane Beamer talked about him playing loose, being that guy who just goes out there, cuts it loose, and does his thing. And someone asked about that, said, you know, what does that look like? And he goes, the quote is, it's just within the offense. I feel like the beginning to the middle of the year, we might have been doing a little bit too much that we didn't need to be doing. Towards the end, we limited some stuff down, uh, some personnel groupings. We had a lot of personnel groupings that limited us a lot, but there are no excuses for that. We tightened down the playbook to plays that uh, to our strengths. My strengths, our receiver strengths, the line strengths, all of that. So that tells me that South Carolina really bogged down in the personnel groupings. And we knew that towards the end of the year. They, made, they talked a little bit about that as the offense started to tick up against the, you know, Tennessee and Clemson. Uh, and that's Dowell Loggins' next challenge. How do you take the cupboard that you have, the ingredients that you have on this roster, and tailor an offense to where your weaknesses or your perceived weaknesses on paper going into the year, right? How do you tailor an offense to where you that those are minimal, yeah, and you can scheme around it because that's what a good offensive coordinator does. It's not cool play designs. It's how do we call plays? How do we scheme things up to where we can win while still having some weaknesses? Right. And speaking of Spencer Rattler, he also spoke about turnovers yesterday out at Media Days, and here's what he had to say. Yeah, good question. Um, that's definitely a main emphasis for this year is limiting turnovers. I mean, you can't win games with turnovers. Um, so I take t- total accountability for that. Uh, what, what I see on film is just sometimes me trying to do too much, trust in my arm too much, um, just trust trust the play, trust the offense, and just uh, protect the ball. And he mentioned they're doing too much, and we definitely saw that particularly earlier on in the season where there were situations where he was just throwing it into coverage that you're like, come on, man, what are you doing? We know he obviously has a great arm, but sometimes you got to either check down or, or, or make a different decision. Um, and that came back to bite him again a lot earlier on in the season. And, and could, part of that could have been what was Marcus Satterfield's offense being overcomplicated, not being comfortable, maybe not even knowing the full play before he went out there. Who knows? There's a lot of things that could be possible there. But but hopefully, as you mentioned, with Dow Loggins' offense being more simplified, more tailored to what he's able to do hopefully it'll cut down on those situations where he's making those bad decisions again great question whoever asked that one whoever asked uh, the question great work should be praised uh, if i have you say so myself and yeah that's the thing that that was really the first time he kind of mentioned trying to do too much really and you know when we talk about offensive play design a lot differs based on what the defense is giving you but if you're running a certain concept you have a first read, you have a second read, and then you work back down the field. There are certain keys each coordinator wants you to have. So it could be a situation where there's a dummy decoy route where the guy on is supposed to run a, a seam route down the sideline to take the safety away to open up an underneath route, and Spencer could have said, hey, listen, I, I got one-on-one coverage. I'm going to trust it and throw 50 yards downfield, and it just doesn't work, and now you're behind the chain. So... Go where, go where the play's designed to go, what we're trying to scheme up. Trust your guys around you, and if you do that, we have a chance to be a fairly efficient and successful offense. I'm going to take a different approach. Ooh. I, I don't think interceptions are actually inherently bad. 
Okay. Okay. If if you're not throwing some interceptions, you're yeah, not everybody, taking. Everybody's got throws. You're not yeah. taking enough chances. Sure. And you got to so, take chances. I, I think fair. the uh, you know let, let's go back let's go back to Jake Bentley towards the end of his career at South Carolina, and uh, you know obviously his his final season got cut extremely short, but. I remember watching him in that North Carolina game, and it felt like he had been – it had been drilled in his head so often protect the ball, protect the ball, during protect the, the offseason to protect the football that he was overthinking and that he was not taking shots down the field when they were there. And if you go back and look, that's something that kind of bogged Rattler down his second year playing at Oklahoma when the numbers dipped. Um South, South Carolina defeated Clemson while throwing a pick six and throwing an interception into the end zone. And, At the five-yard line or whatever it was early. Yeah. Um, and so uh, on paper, are those very bad plays? Yes. Sure. But Spencer Rattler, after both of those plays, popped up and looked literally surprised that the opponent dared to catch his pass, whereas – DJ, you on the other side look scared to death for the entire game. Yeah. So, for me, if Spencer Rattler plays the way he did against Tennessee and Clemson, and it comes with a play here or there that's a pick, I think you are completely okay with that. I would agree it, with that. It's more about there. There was an interception late in in one of the games where South Carolina was up fairly big. It might have been the opener. Um, but I, I can see that I can't see the opponent in my head. I can see the play. But Carolina was already up. They were running the clock, and it was a little bootleg. They did play action bootleg. He has a guy wide open in the flat. It's first down. It's an easy throw for a positive game. He takes a shot down the field, and it gets picked off. The plays like that, where you have an easy right. completion for positive yardage, and you have a lead, I think those are bad interceptions. But but for me. I, I'm, I'm looking at this number. South Carolina also lost 13 fumbles last year. Which is yep. kind of insane. So that that's worst in the conference. So yeah. it's an overall protect the football mindset that I yeah. think they're going to have to improve on executing it. But intercept, let, let Spencer Rattler go play. Those, the right. final yeah. few games he went and played, that's the guy you want. And, and you mentioned that comfortability, or you mentioned to him in that Clemson game having almost a different mindset. We talk so much about his comfortability and the fact that he's been on campus for a full year now, been ingrained in the system for a full year. And as you mentioned, that Clemson game, that's the end of the regular season. That's 12 games as a Gamecock at that point. How much of improving on not turning the ball over as much can go back to just being comfortable, more comfortable this season? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think, I think that's, yeah, that's part of it. Now, it, it is a new scheme. This is not, this is not a second year in the same scheme. I, I think the curious thing will be to see how much, how much have they changed from a ver- verbiage standpoint? How much have they changed from a concept standpoint? Um, you know, I, I think they will try to. I, I would imagine sort of base what they do off of a lot of things they did late last year. But even Dal Loggins talked very openly during spring practice about hey you know we're trying to implement this trying to implement that trying to hey spencer did this at oklahoma sort of taking all those different things the the biggest challenge for dow loggins is going to be to chop it down yeah to to not get called up in this we see coaches do this all the time oh i love this concept i love this idea i love this play i love this i love none of that matters if it can't be executed so you got to take that nfl playbook and you got to cut the thing in a third, yeah. basically, because if, I think most college coaches end up trying to do too much. So I think the key to what you're asking, yeah, from a leadership off the field, commanding the huddle standpoint, respect of his teammate standpoint, he's got a full year of earning that. Sure. There are still questions, though, about his first year in this offense. Can Can they – can they do what they want to do, which is build this offense around number seven? And I think too, there's a I think there's a misconception sometimes about an offensive coordinator. Every offensive coordinator has a playbook that's probably 200 plays deep or 200 concepts deep or terms. And there are situations where every coach has a way to run power. Every coach has a way to run counter, or inside zone, outside zone. It's about, like you said, paring it down and having packages and certain things that they do well 
if South Carolina can't run inside zone, you know what that Dow Logan shouldn't do? Try to run out inside zone 20 times in a game. Like, that's the thing that, that's next for him is figuring out what this team is good at now that you have your entire stable here on campus, and that's what campus for. And uh, a lot of it, too, is, hey, Spencer, it's not just on Spencer Rattler, but you have to figure out, okay, if – does Juice Wells like to run this route against man coverage? So, hey, we can tailor a package and man coverage where Juice is running a lot of these routes or against this this front, what do we like to run here? And Spencer can check and feel comfortable changing plays around to get into the best look. And I think that that's something that that's next for Dowell Loggins is, as he tries to get this offense to a point where it can be competitive and in, in consistently competitive against SEC teams. Right. And we'll continue to listen to what uh, Beamer and company had to say out at SEC Media Days as uh, the show rolls along. We are broadcasting live from Firehouse Subs out in Casey, 542 um, Knox Abbott Drive, right across the street from Brooklyn Casey High School. Going to be out here until noon. Place starting to fill up. Sandwiches is smelling delicious. i got to tear into this uh, pepperoni pizza sub during the break here. Uh, it is the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs, 107.5 The Game. For a limited time, Sweet Deals is offering qualified listeners an exciting vacation. Spend four days and three nights at a luxury hotel in fun and fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada for only $99. Save more than $600. As part of the package, you'll receive $100 in free slot play, a $100 dining advantage card, and each guest will be booked in a suite. You'll be vacationing in luxury that's only available in Vegas. Attendance is required at a presentation for vacation club ownership, but who cares? Cares. There's no purchase necessary, so it's a win-win. Plus, we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. Do not miss this exclusive luxury vacation offer from SweetDeals.com. That's three nights in a luxury Las Vegas hotel for only $99. Go to SweetDeals.com right now and snag this once-in-a-lifetime offer. That's SweetDeals.com. Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs. Founded by Firemen. With Chris Clark, Wes Mitchell, and Tyler Head. On your home of the Gamecock. 1075 The Game. In your own store. <laughs> All right, and welcome back into the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs here on 1075 The Game. We are broadcasting live from Firehouse Subs in KC. 542 Knox Abbott Drive, right across the street. From Brooklyn Casey High School. Going to be out here for about another 40 minutes. We've still got tickets to give away, t shirts, koozies. It's been a great time. Come out and see us. Enjoy some delicious firehouse subs. We are lucky to be joined by the owner, our friend Larry Chandler. Larry, I got to say, I just tried the pepperoni pizza meatball sub in that last break. It was phenomenal. Great. That's awesome here. I'm probably yeah. still wearing it on my face. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. That's okay. Though. You did a good job. <laughs> we would maybe <laughs> tell you. <laughs> uh, that's a great Pop- sub, isn't it? It's amazing. Oh, the, the Italian seasoning on the top, the garlic bread on the bottom, perfection. Great combination. Absolutely. By the way, you can get it app exclusive. Not the sandwich. You can walk in okay. and get the sandwich, but it's $6 for a medium on the app. And app I may or may not have taken advantage <laughs> no, no, of that multiple yeah, hope, times. Hope people do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's a great deal, too, to do that. So. No, and as always, we thank you so much for allowing us to come out and be out here. Great to get to meet our audience, enjoy some delicious subs, and uh, just have fun on a Friday like yeah. this. Yeah. I just uh, met Gamecock Larry. That's pretty cool. We shared. <laughs> it's a moment. Did, uh, it's a moment. Larry, did, did Gamecock Larry provide you his uh, predictions for the season? Did he show you? <laughs> No, not, no. Okay, I, I saw him. I'm not going to ruin the surprise, but the, the Gamecocks are winning a lot of games <laughs> yes, from what are. I saw. Are we and, and and he, any game? But. Well, I, I don't want to give that away, but <laughs> let's just say. He'll, he'll call it. He'll probably call. Has he called into uh, the early game yet? He called and in this morning. Did he give the predictions oh, wow. then? Yes. Is he saving them? He said 12-0. and 0, Oh, okay. And so we're going to keep winning past that. He didn't say which games, but. He said, we're then. just going to keep going past that. I'll be honest with you. I haven't seen a loss on the schedule myself. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. But, you know, a little swayed that way. So I think we can win them all. So, so see, season is it, – it's talking season is here, but – Soon, we're going to be getting ready to tailgate. I don't want to let Colin hear this. We are 43 days away from kickoff. Okay, Sorry, 40, Colin. 43 days away, Larry. Uh, all right, how, how are we feeling, man? Are, is the excitement level there yet, or does that not kick in for another two, three, four weeks? No, you know, July flies by really fast. Mm-hmm. And once it hits like August 1st, and then it's all on football 
getting ready, you know, thinking about the schedule, the team, and, you know, getting reports every day and seeing how everybody's doing. And uh, the cycling just continues to build. And uh, we got a bunch of rooms in Charlotte. Excited about going there. My birthday is September first, so we oh, can't perfect. lose on my there birthday you go. weekend, right? Oh. So, um, so just a lot, a lot of excitement, getting ready to build up. That's how it usually works for, mm. for me and uh, friends and family. So. We're coming right off SEC Media Days. Shane and company spoke yesterday. Does Media Days do anything for you? Get you back into that feeling of football's right around the corner? Oh yeah, it was really good. I, I've all, I saw, I did listen to him last night on the way back from Charleston. The whole he, he did, he did a great job. Obviously, I did uh, uh, catch up a little bit of Lane Kiffin, so he's always <laughs> he, always has a sound biter. The only reason he came up, he, he was next in the U. And yeah, yeah. Out, so I just started listening to him. I didn't listen to the whole thing, but yeah, it's, it's all really seriously talking season. For sure. Absolutely. Lane looked like he had. Uh, it is in Nashville. Let's just it say it is in Nashville. Lane looked like he had put on put the uh, Jerry Freshwater persona on <laughs> back for another night uh, before before he went up on the podium. Did, did you hear what the one reporter uh, said? Hey, people tell me I look like you, and he went, "What's your mom's name?" <laughs> Classic Kiffin. God, uh, it, but. His delivery of that deadpan, the slight no, no slight pause, then this like little he's thinking about it for a second, <laughs> the little grin like a kid gives you when he knows he's done something he wasn't supposed to, it was perfection. Lane, Lane always entertaining, absolutely very entertaining. I think he purpo- he purposely goes up to some press conferences and like is is boring on purpose. Oh yeah. When he looks like he just it's the last place he would want to be. Yeah. It's not real he probably doesn't want to be there, he'd rather be fishing or something. But he oh. like will just go and just to troll people. Remember those the hype videos at FAU where he seems so <laughs> uninterested in everything yeah, going on? In the stadium. Yeah. Yeah, like, oh can't wait. We're building it in Boca Raton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> oh man. Something else there, so um but I do have to give a quick shout out, if you don't mind, uh, the uh, great band, cheerleaders, dance team. They're they're ready to get into their practice, and so you know we can't do anything without them. And uh, so big time. Sorry, I had to had to give them a shout out. No, absolutely, they, no, you- they work extremely hard, and a lot of people don't know that they they practice a lot of hours before season. So when um, my freshman year at Carolina, I lived at Bates House, and right outside Bates House, that field is where, I don't know where they practice now, but that's where the band, maybe the cheerleaders, but definitely the band and um, the people that do all the twirling stuff, set things on fire and throw it up in the air, they they would practice there. So I would hear it out of my window, literally leading up to the season, every single day, 95 degree Columbia heat. So that's a good shout out, Larry. Like they, uh, they put in a lot of time in order to entertain on game day. I don't envy anybody in the band that has to wear the full get up in those 95 degree Columbia days because that seems brutal. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So, Larry, you mentioned uh, getting into into kind of away from football season and turning the page to official football season. What's your are you getting up reading Gamecock Central every morning? Do you have the Phil, St- Phil Steele magazine like Wes? Wes brought it into the studio. Yeah, I get yesterday. the uh, Phil Steele online version. Okay, of it, yeah, and uh, I already got it. Signed up after last season. Got a you know deal on it. Whatever. So you got it early. Early. So you got it. Uh, wow. So uh, VIP. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah, I mean I'm reading everything. It starts building up. Or you really start really. I've, I've been, of course, during the. All season reading y'all, reading everything, but uh, you really start looking to everything you can to get positive. Like, yeah, reinforces that we're going to go, not lose a game all season. <laughs> can they pull a game cock, Larry? <laughs> schedule going to mirror his his schedule prediction. Well, I mean, if, seriously, if you put me on the spot, I I can't sit there and tell you my game cocks are going. I can't see a game on the schedule we're not going to win. I'm sorry. I, but you until it happens, if, if you go in thinking you're going to lose, you've already lost, right? right? I, I just, I'm just not that type fan. I know y'all have to kind of do your predictions, whatever. But yeah, so yeah, I'm a homer. I, That's you know, okay. But, yeah, so. What game are you looking forward to the most right here as we sit here on July 21st? Is it North Carolina? Oh, yeah, because it's right Carolina. around your birthday. Uh, it's the first game. It's always the next game, this Chris. Is, that's right. <laughs> hey, hey man you, got, you got to go one or no. But, but yeah. A lot of times it wouldn't be the first game, maybe, but on that schedule. But North Carolina is unique. We're underdog, and I found that uh, interesting uh, in itself. But, uh, you know, I, I think it's going to be a very entertaining game. But uh, that's a, probably the best game of the weekend. I'm, there's some good games. I think that might be the top game of the weekend, quite frankly, with the two quarterbacks. Um, so uh, uh, you've got two guys that are going to be probably playing in the NFL, right? So Definitely. It's a really uh, good battle. It's going to be very entertaining, uh, I, I think. So. 
Yeah, I'm trying to think what FSU and Florida State play again this year. Alabama doesn't have a big week one game. Um, yeah, I think it's safe to say the two Carolinas that might be matchup of the yeah. weekend. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I think uh, after that, you know, um, seeing how we do on the road, you know, kind of the little, our little tour of Georgia, Tennessee, Florida, since we're not going to get to play them in 24 and see, see okay. what happens. What are your thoughts on that, them no longer being on the schedule, at uh, least every year past this year? I think it's kind of strange. We, we border Georgia and Tennessee, and we're not playing them. I, I don't I don't. I, I think that's bad. I, we should uh, we should play them quite often, if not every year, especially Georgia. I, you know, so uh, yeah, I'm very disappointed in that part. Yeah, you can say well, you get to see Oklahoma, Alabama, and all that, but that's that's a lot of West teams yeah. on that schedule. For 24. It was so literally weird looking at the graphic for the schedule when it came out and not seeing all those teams. Like you know, maybe one of them wasn't there. You might be well, this is conference expansion. That's what you expect. But not seeing Georgia, not seeing Tennessee. Flor- Florida's not on there either. Are they for 24? No, not for 24. So not seeing any of those three teams, and you're just used to you're used to seeing them every year. You're used to that being – I remember as a kid going into those games or going into the season, you start circling those games as like, man, if South Carolina could beat a Tennessee or beat a Georgia or beat a Florida, that was like a benchmark yeah. that you were making progress. So it's just weird – to, like Oklahoma going out there, like that's going to be fun. It's going to be fun to have some new, you know, new stadiums to go see, new towns to go see. But South Carolina should always play at least two out of those three teams. I feel like. Hundred percent. Absolutely. Well, Larry, thank you as always for letting thank us come y'all. out here. We enjoy hanging out. And again, broadcasting live from Firehouse Subs, 542 Knox Abbott Drive in Casey, right across the street from Brooklyn Casey High School. Here till noon. Still got plenty of things to give away and plenty more to talk about on the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs on 107.5. Makes a little sports analysis, pop culture, and great interviews. And you've got the Rich Eisen Show podcast. Whenever I drive separately with Susie, you always have to go first. So sure enough, I pull into the garage. She's not even here yet. Which which allows me now the opportunity to stand there, just so holding annoying. the door open, so annoying. like the gentleman that I am. Oh. And I snapped a photograph of Susie's reaction, and there it is. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get here? The Rich Eisen Show Podcast, wherever you listen. Have the game. It's the Game Got Central Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs. Founded by Firemen. With Chris Clark, Wes Mitchell, and Tyler Head. On your home of the Gamecocks. 107.5 The Game. I'm excited for the game. I haven't met Drake yet. I mean, he kind of blew up on the scene last year and had a great season. You know, credit to him. I'm excited to get to compete versus them. Uh, it'll be a fun game. Hopefully we'll put on a show. And welcome back into the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs here on 107.5 The Game. Tyler West, Chris Collin, we're all broadcasting live from Firehouse Subs in Casey. 542 Knox Abbott Drive, right across the street from Brooklyn, Casey High School. Be here for about another 20 minutes. We have tickets to give away. We have t-shirts, towels, koozies, the whole nine yards. Come by and see us and, of course, enjoy some delicious Firehouse Subs. I've been munching on a club on a sub during that last commercial break, which heard right there coming out of the commercial was Spencer Rattler talking about Drake May. And we were just talking with Larry a few minutes ago. He says he's obviously very excited for game number one against the Tar Heels the day after his birthday, funny enough. But this matchup, I know we broke down Carolina a couple of weeks ago, but this matchup is really going to be focused on these two quarterbacks. And Drake May is thought to be one of the top draft picks. He's going to have a lot of Heisman uh, hype behind him coming into the season. And Spencer Rattler's a little bit on the other end. We talked about some of those lists that have been put out for draft projections. He's not expected to get drafted at this point in time. If he is, it's going to be in a very late round. No Heisman hype or anything like that from a guy that two seasons ago was thought to be the Heisman favorite going into his second season at Oklahoma. And and just kind of two opposite ends of the spectrum with these two guys, but I expect them to both play very, very well in this game. You know, when they do the promos going into the game, when they do the in-game going in and out of the commercial breaks, it's going to be a lot of shots, serious shots of Spencer and Drake and the photo shoots, yes. that's going to be the – they're going to lean into that one hard. Is, and I don't blame them. No, because Drake May was a five-star guy. He was committed to Alabama, was he not? And North Carolina flipped him or – I believe he, so. He was a big-time prospect. And, and so two five-star guys going at it on week one, you rarely see that. 
Well, and you look at the numbers last year for Drake. I mean, you know, he's a big kid. I mean, he's 6'4", 225, 230. And in his first year as a starter, all he did was deliver 66% completions, 4,300 yards, and 38 touchdowns to seven picks. So that's statistically, good. it's a solid. Pretty that's pretty <laughs> good. They, they tell me that's good. <laughs> they, they, they are right. And, you know, obviously, so one of the big storylines, and we hit on this, and this is the case for both teams, you got two new offensive coordinators, one for each team. I think we don't know what, look, we don't know what the, the end result will be or the game-by-game game by game results will be with this Dow Log and Spencer Rattler partnership. I don't think it's a huge leap to say the overall product as far as consistency is probably going to be better you would Spencer Rattler I don't think that's a huge leap you know will we see a Tennessee-esque performance at some point maybe against yeah. a team of that caliber we don't know but I think there's no doubt that this offense the way it's being structured the partnership as, as Spencer Rattler has called it with Dow Loggins is going to help Spencer be more consistent I think it'll help him be more consistent that he's just year two here at South Carolina and he's a year older. With Drake May, maybe it's a little bit more of a question. Right. Uh, he's going to put up big numbers. He's going to be, if he wants to leave after this season, he can leave. He's probably a first-round pick. Who knows, maybe he's the number one pick. But will he put up those type of numbers? Because Phil Longo's system at UNC was very quarterback-friendly. It didn't really, it almost didn't matter who was playing in it. He tended to have talented quarterbacks that helped. But can he replicate that type of season? That, I think, is a question, and it'll be a question game one. Gamecock writer calls Drake May system quarterback. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it's in both yeah. material. No, exactly. It, the joke, he, he, we're not saying he's a system quarterback, right. but that long go, you go back to his time at Ole Miss even, yeah. they had prolific offensive seasons even without um, – NFL first round caliber talents, Jordan Tiamu, guys like that. Right. That system, like Chris said, is incredibly quarterback friendly to where even when you have a, a mid level player in terms of pro potential in it, he can still put up good numbers and it takes an even bigger step when you have a guy like Sam Howell, when you have a guy like Drake May in there to help and North Carolina has questions on its offensive line that hasn't been good. South Carolina's questions on its offensive line and whoever it's such a cliche trope, but you're going to have to protect this quarterback, whoever it is, if you want to win that game. Right. With, with Longo, it's very weird to me how he has consistently put up big numbers everywhere he's been, but it also feels like everywhere he's been, there's a there's a sense, at least on the internet, of, oh, he left because he was kind of uh, low-key encouraged to see if there were other options out there. Look around, yeah. And, but you look at the numbers, and, I mean, the guy has put up numbers every single place he's been. So, I, um, you know, I, I think this game, from an outside standpoint, or the South Carolina looking at North Carolina standpoint, I think this game is more dangerous if you're going up against Longo, in my opinion. So, I, I think you look at this North Carolina team, they're top 25 for a reason, but they do have their share of questions over there as well. Yeah. The, to go back to, you, you had dropped the Jordan Tamu reference. That was a great one, by the way. Thank you. So Guys, remember to do. Colin has a spreadsheet of all Phil Longo's past quarterbacks. He's probably a reference. That year that South Carolina beat yeah, them in Oxford, which was 2018, Jordan Tamu put up 3,900 yards passing. against Carolina. <laughs> It no, felt close. Like it. I was at that game. It felt like it. It was, it was 379 against Carolina. But no, he put up 3,900 yards, now 19 touchdowns. Drake May had, what did I say, 38. 700, he, something He literally like doubled the, the touchdown mark. The point is, Drake May is more talented than Jordan Tamu. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the country. But that system accentuated his strengths, yes. and it accentuates all quarterback strengths. And, and that's why it's tough to play against. And, and the question now, too, becomes, uh, I believe it's Josh Downs was yeah. their big receiver. He's off to the NFL. They lost two. What, yeah, what What does that receiver room look like? What does, you know, we make a ton about, you know, returning offensive production and returning starts, and North Carolina returned a bunch of starters on the offensive line last year, and it was bad, like downright bad. It was not a very good offensive line, and that defense has a ton of questions. So, yes, while there are pieces very similar to South Carolina, you can look and say, oh, they got this dude, they got this dude, they got this dude. There's still a lot of questions about collectively what that looks like. Right. As talented as... 
that defense is, too. It's it's weird because they have had their struggles, but then you look up and down. These are guys Chris and I followed during recruiting because a ton of them had early offers from South Carolina, or in some cases, it was actually a South Carolina battle. And, and these are, you know, a lot of these are going back to, like, Muschamp era, sort of the end of that. Some of those defensive linemen are blue chippers, guys that I would look at out of high school and be like, that guy is guaranteed to be good in college. And they just haven't all turned out, or the collective of them as a unit has not turned out into being quite what you would think. But I'm, I'm curious to see, this is going to be billed as Drake May versus Spencer Rattler. We know football is not a 1v1 game, that it's really not about quarterback versus quarterback. But I do think that sometimes when guys are challenged like that, they kind of uh, crumble to it a little bit. And sometimes guys thrive in sort of being challenged like that. Spencer Rattler has always struck me, and it's kind of been confirmed spending time around him. He is not a false confidence, false bravado guy. Some guys present confidence, and it's something they almost have to do to try and create confidence. He's never struck me as a false bravado guy. Like I I think you're going to see a very driven Spencer Rattler. He's not going to tell you that. He's not going to give you the quote. He's not going to admit this game means a lot as far as him versus May, but I, I think you're going to get a very dialed-in Spencer Rattler for that very reason. Absolutely. We are Take only, over. cover your ears, Colin, 43 days away from this game <laughs> kicking off. And coming up next, we'll wrap up today's edition of the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour. Colin has an interesting question he wants to post to all of us. And we'll wrap up today's show broadcasting live from Firehouse Subs in Casey on 107.5 The Game. Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs. Founded by Firemen. With Chris Clark, Wes Mitchell, and Tyler Head. On your home of the Gamecocks. 1075 The Game. And welcome back into the Gamecocks Central Takeover Hour. Presented by Firehouse Subs. Out here at Firehouse Subs in Casey. 542 Knox uh, Abbott Drive, right across the street from Brooklyn Casey High School. Just a couple more minutes to go, wrapping up today's edition. As always, we thank Larry Chandler for allowing us to be out here enjoying some delicious firehouse subs and getting to meet a lot of people, giving away a lot of stuff. It's been a uh, great time. A couple more minutes here, as I mentioned. Uh, Chris has been waiting to test me once again yes. for Rest- either my racing or wrestling knowledge today is uh wrestling you okay. nailed the racing question the other day all right Asked, are you doing the cool voice or are we just gonna table that <laughs> no 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 no, 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 no. no. oh we had a voice spot. for this yeah well working we on working on working on it, on it. Okay. Working on it. Okay. all right you're not gonna get this i'm not okay he's all not right. okay. Okay. okay all right <laughs> okay let's see hey, i already know survivor series right yeah, survivor, survivor series. series all right all right, I'm taking Tyler to get this. Oh, God, I just trust. Trust. See, now I feel like there's pressure. I just right. trust. I just trust right. the knowledge right. here. The main event. Main event. All right. Oh, he's gonna get it then. Yeah. yeah. Of the 2012 Survivor Series. 2012 Survivor Series. Um, I feel like it's a trick question. Looking at Chris grinning over there. It's not. A, it's not a trick. It's just. <laughs> a, uh, let me see. Uh oh. Have I stopped here. him? 2012 Survivor Series. That was um, CM Punk in the WWE Championship match. I want to say he was facing John Cena because the match got interrupted by the Shield. Did I get that right? You're close. Close. Was CM Punk in the main event? Yes. Was he? Um, and it was also Ryback. Was it Ryback? Yes. Yes. Sweet. It was, was a three-man match. A triple threat <laughs> match. Triple okay. Threat. Yep. CM would, Punk, Cena, and Ryback. All right. I wow. would love to see a WWE like immaculate grid and watch you do it. <laughs> like if there was a, an, an immaculate grid for NASCAR or WWE, how good do you think you would be at it? Probably pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like I'm not gonna brag. Yeah. All right. Summer, yeah. SummerSlam, but credit. also you, you like WrestleMania. Yeah. Like exactly. This and you can amazing. You continue to amaze us every day. So, All right. Baby. All right. Yep. What's the uh, question of the now day? It's time for so, Colin. I have multiple, and we can focus on an SEC Media Day one. We're, we'll stay topical, and Tyler, you and I can focus on another one. Okay. Maybe next week. We'll okay. Yeah. W- hey, we got we got all you, summer, yeah. man. <laughs> Summer ain't, <laughs> summer's in it pretty doggone quick, actually. Uh, so players were asked by certain media members in the main room, what is the largest animal you think you could beat? Maybe not kill, but like defeat in a fight in hand-to-hand combat. And we're talking like the animal has to like run away. 
Yeah, I like, give up. I can't. There's take a you. clear, definitive winner in this fight. Okay. What is the largest animal you think you could do that with? Wes? Uh, uh, <laughs> you didn't come up with this question. No. For, okay. No, no, no. All right. It's an awful question. And this was asked to Kai. This correct? was asked. Well, it was asked everybody. to a bunch, of, bunch okay. of players. Kai did not get asked on record about it. Uh, but I found out about it, saw Kai in passing, I and asked him, and I knew his answer. I see. Okay. okay. I, um, I also asked him the I did a rod question. <laughs> I'm not getting canceled because um, I feel here's here's the here's the thing. Everybody's talking about they can fight a bear no. or no. a crocodile or that was Kai's you know crocodile. or a gorilla or no no you can't mm-hmm. not happening. The only animals that would be small enough for me to defeat would be animals that Peta would be like on you if I even say the words. So I see. Okay. Um. No, no animals. I'm not any animal that I could beat. I would not want to fight. All right, I've got. That's one. my answer. Right. Mine's a capybara. Okay. We never said threatening animal. We just said the largest animal. And capybaras, I just looked it up, grow to about 4.3 feet and could weigh up to 175 pounds. No, you're done. But, but they are incredibly friendly animals. They're docile. Yeah, they're, they're not aggressive. They're incredibly docile. They get along with most species. You put me in a ring with a capybara, that thing is just going to let me just, like, haymaker after haymaker, I think. I have one. All right. And, you, and Wes is probably going to say you're, you're an idiot to me. A seal out of water. What kind of, <laughs> what, what kind of seal? That, that actually does kind of matter. A seal. Now, they can. Sea lions can stand up. I was down at Myrtle Beach, and uh, at, during vacation, we went to the pirate show down there. And the sea lion can stand up, so I'd be worried, like, even out of water, you stand up and, like, slap me or something yeah. and just knock me out. I'll sweep the leg. But I feel or like fin. Whatever. You sweep the <laughs> There's a base there, though. Like, you can't really sweep that. Yeah, yeah it's I pretty, guess so. It's pretty strong. I, I say the seal. Okay. Out of water. In water, I'm done. Uh, I'm going to go pretty low here. I feel like I could defeat a snake. Oh, nope. okay. Is, oh, is that not a good enough answer? Well, like, snakes, what kind of snake? Like, uh, I mean, I'm not wrestling a rattlesnake. I'm not going to go that far. Um, like a garden snake? Sure, why not? <laughs> um, I mean, if we go out of water, I could go like any fish, right? Just allow it enough time to you just be stand sucking there, for like, air. You just stand there <laughs> stand and watch there it. Boom, I win. Also, like, yeah, exactly. I, um, I don't know. Uh, shoot. I don't know. Fox is a rabbit. I wouldn't want to get in there okay, with a fox. No, rabbit, rabbit would not be a bad one. Yeah, a rabbit? Okay, a rabbit. I think yeah. that's fair. Not very big. Now, Pina might come after me on that one. Yeah. What, what did a poor little cute innocent rabbit do to you? <laughs> yeah. Well, I've almost run over a couple of my apartment complex, so I'm halfway there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I guess i go with rabbit. Now, I did ask Kai my I did a rod question. What did he say? He was like, do wolves count as dogs? And I was like, yes. Yeah. Same same family, yeah, but I was like, yeah, wolves count. He said bobcat. Um, no. I mean, it's a cat, so it's not the same thing, but... Bobcat, like, that's not a bad... It's not, like, the but best answer you, in the world, but I think it's solid. Could you harness them enough to work as a cohesive unit is the question. Well, here's the thing. How much... Where do bobcats live, and are they built for the cold? That's another aspect of this that not a lot of people it's really good point. Pay, You know, where, you know... I asked a, a member of the South Carolina horde, not a player, not a coach, okay. but a part of the contingent that was there. Uh, he said polar bear, which is, I feel like, the easy, low-hanging fruit answer. Is that singular or a but team like, no, of but polar like a bears? Team of polar bears. A singular, low-hanging fruit. That they could beat a polar bear? No. This is no, my the Iditarod. Iditarod. But I, we don't know what that is. Oh, right? sorry. Yeah. The Iditarod yeah, is, the the, is a dog sled race. No, no, no. We know what that is, but what yes. is the question? If you're replacing if you, the dogs. Okay. You have to build a team of with one singular animal, like a team All right. of animal. Mercifully, we are out of time, y'all. Yeah, wait, <laughs> so this, we're going to send this thing back to Terry. This has gone off the rails. Yes. This, is, this will conclude today's edition of the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour, live from Firehouse Subs and Casey. Again, thanks so much to Larry Chandler for allowing us to be out here uh, heading over to Terry and Jay with Halftime Show coming up next, 107.5 The Game.
Onyx credits and cost so reductions for AAA heating and air. Find out for yourself. Give them a phone call today and speak to their comfort advisors. 803-677-1500. You can get a tax credit of up to $3,800 plus a $1,500 rebate to buy back your old unit. Call AAA Heating and Air today to find out more. 803-677-1500. Triple A air when you need us. Triple A heating and air. We keep the clutter out of your gutter. Call on the gutter man. The gutter man offers a variety of guards for your gutter. Protect your biggest investment. Call the guys in the powder blue trucks. Locally owned and operated for 46 years. Call 791-7147. That's 791-7147. The Craft Beer Passport. It's not just any beer, it's a craft beer. Make that two choice craft beers at 17 fine breweries. It's a value of $285 and you pay just $79. That's 38 beers for $79. It's not just any deal, it's a sweet deal. The Craft Beer Passport. You'll find it at 1075thegame.com. After a long day like this, whew, a little flavor goes a long way. So start your evening off right with Seagram's Escape Spike. Grab fan fave Jamaican Me Happy or try our other charged up flavors like mouth-watering pineapple cherry lime, delicious tiki punch, or refreshing...